This is Dror Moshe Kasuto. Shalom uvracha. Today we're going to start with another series of, of teachings. Um, I have a great bookcase with many, many deep um, things written inside those holy books and I wanted to share some of my thoughts so I'm um, you know we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna open and close a few books in that new series and um, and the Satashem with help from heaven you'll understand some of those great things that are um, that are flaming inside of me some of those great points that um, that are pushing me forward to go and to to reveal the truth of the creator the real will of the creator some of the books are books of kabbalah some of the books are books of ancient midrashim stories and tales from our past from our ancient and holy history of our nation some of them are are deep secrets some of them are less complex but still very meaningful and deep and I'll tell you, I'll show you those books. So first one I wanted to share, and I'm going to share a few, few things from that book, is the book, Sefer Pirkei de Rabbi Eliezer, the book that is showing chapters from the life of Rabbi Eliezer. Now, in today's explanation, in today's talk, I'll just going to explain to you a little bit on this book, who, who wrote that book and what took place, and then in the next couple of sessions we will go deeper a little bit into this book so first of all um, who was Rabbi Eliezer? Rabbi Eliezer Ben Horkanus I told this story many times in the past in my classes the main time and first time that I heard the story of Rabbi Eliezer Ben Horkanus was by Reb Noach Weinberg May the Creator protect his soul, a real righteous man that made wonders in the world. And I learned for a couple of years in his yeshiva, um, Esha Torah in Jerusalem, in the old city. And I, in one of his lectures, um, like 15 years ago, so he told the story of Rabbi Eliezer ben Orkanus. So to make a long story short, Rabbi Eliezer ben Orkanus was a Baal Tshuva. He lived more than 2,000 years ago. Um, in the area of Jerusalem. He was the son of a very wealthy person named Horkanus. And Horkanus was um, his father. Rabbi Eliezer was in the age of 27, not educated to keep Torah and Mitzvot at all. He didn't know how to say Shema Israel. He didn't know how to say Birkat Amazon. He didn't know to bless on the food. He didn't know how to stand prayer Shemona Isre. He was not observant, he was not educated at all. He was plowing um, on the back of the mountain where the rocks were for his father's business company and, and he was like totally ignorant. And something happened to him in his life that he decided to make a change and he started crying and his father asked him, why are you crying? He told him, I want to learn Torah. And his father told him, listen, you're 27, like, you can't go to school, you won't make it, you're too old, get married, send your children to learn Torah, and, like, it's going to be okay. Rabbi Eliezer didn't accept it, kept on crying. And he cried, and he cried, and he cried, until Elijah the prophet, Eliyahu Anavi, came to him one day and told him, why are you crying? He asked him, why are you crying? So Rabbi Eliezer told him, I want to learn Torah. Eliyahu Anavi couldn't ta teach him, even though he wanted to teach him the, the, the lacking of Rabbi Eliezer, his lack of power of understanding, his ability to learn was so tiny that Eli Elijah the prophet sent him to go and learn from Rabbi Yochanan, Rabban Yochanan ben Zakkai, the prince of Israel in that time, in that generation, that he will teach him. Rabbi Eliezer went to him and sat in front of his door when Rabban Yochanan ben Zakkai came, Rabbi Eliezer stood up and cried. Rabban Yochanan asked him, why are you crying? So Rabbi Eliezer answered to him, applied, I want to learn Torah. So Rabbi, Rabban Yochanan asked him, so why your father didn't taught you Shema, Shemona you don't know all those things? He said, no, I don't know. 
So Rabban Yochanan sat with him and taught him for like it took him two weeks to teach him every rule, every halacha. Like you need to close your eyes when you're saying Shema to Rabbi Eliezer. It took two weeks to remember that. Like what? Like in, in which halacha? What are you saying? Like which, with which hand? Like the left hand? Like like us? Like basically. And he like he didn't know how to grab it. He couldn't. He didn't have the vessels of learning. They were so weak. He was like so off the way of learning, but his desire pushed him to continue. And it's written in this holy book that for two weeks Rabbi Eliezer was teaching him rules of Judaism. Every rule it took him two weeks to put into his mind until he will catch it. He was such a hard learner, but he put all of his effort. He tried. It's such an inspiring teaching. This person, Rabbi Eliezer ben Orkanus, was so great that we cannot understand. And he came from such rock bottom. He came from such rough place. He didn't know anything, anything. And it's a, it's a moral, it's a, it's a learning, it's a teaching, educative so well for us to open our eyes to understand no matter how far you are, how lack of, of, of understanding you are, how empty and poor you are from, from skills and learnings and talents and abilities and sources. Don't give up if you want it. The result of Rabbi Eliezer ben Orkanus of working so hard was, and like next time I'm going to read it for you from the book to like his lectures. Like after a while, Rabban Yochanan told him, okay, now I want you to teach. So Rabbi Eliezer told him, listen, I'm like, who am I to teach? So he told him, I want you to teach. So Rabbi Eliezer told him, but I look like a well of water, that the water that I can pull out from myself, from my inner source, is only as much as you put inside of me. So I can teach only what you taught me, Rabbi Eliezer said to Rabban Yochanan ben Zakai. So Rabban Yochanan ben Zakai told him, no, you are like a, a spring that water are coming from the depths, from underground, and filling it from within. And you can bring out much more Torah than the Torah that I put into you. And Rabbi Eliezer ben Orkanu sat and said words of Torah, and his face was shining like the face of Moses when Moses gave the Torah from Mount Sinai. That was his achievement in the beginning, in the first steps of him teaching Torah. Already he achieved the level of Moses, that Moses' face was shining from seeing the light of heaven, the light of Hashem. He was shining so like, so brightly that people couldn't look at him while he was talking. In the end of his days, Rabbi Eliezer ben Orkanus became to be the rabbi of Rabbi Akiva and many others. And he was one of the greatest people in his generation. On his deathbed, students came to him to accept his, like to see his face and to give him last respect. And he said to Rabbi Akiva that Rabbi Akiva have not completed his learnings from him and that Rabbi Akiva was supposed to learn more from him. And, and Rabbi Akiva told him, okay, so teach me. So Rabbi Eliezer told him, are you sure? He said, yes, teach me now. Let's complete everything right now. And immediately when Rabbi Eliezer started talking, the great Rabbi Eliezer, Rabbi Eliezer Agadol, Everyone called him Rabbi Eliezer Hagadol, the great Rabbi Eliezer. When he opened his mouth and started teaching Rabbi Akiva on his deathbed, fire came down from heaven, surrounded the bed and the house that they were at, and all the rest of the wise, righteous people had to run away to evacuate the house. And only him and Rabbi Akiva was, were there. And he spoke and spoke and spoke and spoke and spoke until Rabbi Akiva's mind was exploding. He couldn't continue. So Rabbi Akiva screamed. He said, stop, stop, I can't handle it anymore. And Rabbi Eliezer told him, I'm still holding the holy tablets. I haven't passed them to you. Like in every generation, the righteous man of the old generation is transferring, giving the holy tablets from him 
to the next generation. And he was willing to give out the holy tablets to Rabbi Akiva. But Rabbi Akiva was not able to receive it. He, he didn't have the vessels. He starts screaming. So Rabbi Eliezer answered to him and told him, I'm rising back to heaven, holding the tablets with me. And when he said those words, he passed away. And Rabbi Akiva cried, and Rabbi Akiva screamed, and they couldn't save him. And he disappeared with the Torah to himself, like he couldn't pass it, because the students didn't have the power of understanding. I think it was Rabbi Akiva that said it, that he had not took enough Torah from his rabbi, and he compared himself to how much that he took to a dog that is drinking, licking water from the ocean. Like, you, he didn't took out any amount compared to the huge amount, the endless amounts of water that are in the ocean. Means the Torah that was inside of Rabbi Eliezer ben Orkanus. So Rabbi Eliezer ben Orkanus was so great and so giant and so fantastic and started his process in the age of 27 without knowing the even one Jewish rule in a perfect way. So it's a teaching for us to have hope. And Bezat Hashem, I'm going to teach you more from this book to understand like how deep he went and how great was his understanding. Again, only to teach us and to plant hope inside of our hearts, to believe and to understand our true potential, how much we can achieve by just wanting and following the voice of heaven with an honest and sincere heart, with good and pure intentions only to be honest and truthful and straight. Amen. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.